So this morning we are going to uh, talk about uh, high inflation and that's not only affecting our own wallets, that's also uh, affecting a lot of uh, companies and especially uh, their, their cash flow. It's obviously uh, part of uh, performance uh, leadership, one of the four pillars uh, we at BSN uh, think are important in uh, these daunting times uh, to be um, uh, a great, uh, great leader. Today we have uh, two speakers who are very well uh, aware about uh, the impact of inflation uh, on, on businesses. One is uh, our associate professor, Heinrich uh, Slobbe. Heinrich, uh, uh, welcome. Thank you. And, uh, the other one is um, Adamole uh, George. Adamole, uh, you're, um, you're from Lagos. You're in Lagos at the moment? Yes, I am. Good morning. Yes. And Adamole works uh, for KPMG and is uh, supporting uh, companies on uh, secondments uh, from uh, KPMG. I wish you um, an interesting uh, session, and I want to say to you, uh, Hinrich, um, take us away. Yes, I will. Thank you very much. I will start the presentation so that we can uh, see some slides. Here you see the titles uh, Annette was mentioning, so I hope everyone can see this presentation, yes? Yes. That's good. Okay. Uh, I want to discuss tomorrow, uh, of this, mo this morning, uh, I want to discuss with you the impact on uh, inflation on companies, uh, your company maybe, and uh, uh, also give you some insights in uh, new ways of coping with this uh, uh, challenge, but because inflation is something uh, in the Netherlands we see just the last two years. But in other uh, countries, it's a daily, daily business for decades already. So uh, inflation, uh, inflation is, uh, is meaning that uh, the prices are rising um, and inflation means that all uh, products uh, uh, are uh, getting more expensive. And what is the uh, impact on the cash flows of organizations? It's depending on what side of your company this inflation occurs. Um, if it's uh, inflation on your sales only, then inflation is a very uh, good thing for you because if prices are getting higher, you will have more cash flow in. But on the other hand, if your uh, inflation is on the other side of your company with your cost, then it's a problem because uh, inflation uh, will uh, give you a change in negative way of your cash flow because of your uh, cost will get higher. And if it's not possible to uh, pass those uh, higher prices to your customers, uh, then uh, your uh, margins will uh, getting lower. You will be, be squeezed by inflation. Um, and and uh, the reason why we are talking about inflation normally as a negative way, uh, negative thing for economy is when it's higher than more than 2%. We say that uh, there are a lot of negative impacts on the economy uh, uh, because uh, your, uh, the value of your assets uh, will, the real value of your assets will uh, be lower if you have uh, savings or you have a pension, the pensions will have a lower uh, value because of inflation, but there are also other uh, things that are a problem because there can be a, a wage inflation spiral that you're having higher inflation, higher wages, your cost will getting higher, your inflation will get higher, and that can lead to a crisis, an economic crisis. Um, the way your organization or your company is coping with inflation, it's depending on the competitive powers you have to deal with. And in, uh, uh, in the Porter analysis, the five forces of Porter, we see that there are some uh, competitive powers that can influence your uh, cash flow. Uh, depending on the buyer power and the supplier power in the in 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 the way you are selling and buying you can see that if there is a 
high buyer power, then you uh, cannot uh, give the higher prices in your cost to your customers. You will not be able to have a, 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 a more uh, sales with higher prices because of the so buyer high. power. If your supplier power is very high, you will get squeezed by this inflation and your margins will get lower. And that's the reason why there must be an answer for companies if they are coping with this problem with higher prices, but not able to get those higher prices to their customers. And this answer is uh, in what we call value proposition. Um, value proposition is a, a term from the model of Osterwaller, uh, the canvas business model of business model canvas and we see with business model canvas uh, that uh, if you have a value proposition that's uh, 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 better than your competitors then inflation will not uh, be a trouble for you anymore or not as big as the problem you had what is a value proposition we see in this business model canvas that your customers um, are part of the uh, business model canvas in your segmentation. Your customers are buying products or services and that products or services are normally uh, meant to, uh, to do some customer jobs. So these customer jobs and product and services are uh, linked to each other. And if you uh, have only a normal a product with no competitive advantage uh, to your competitors, then uh, inflation uh, will uh, cause you troubles because you cannot pass those higher prices, this inflation to your customers. But if you can add some things to your products or services like gain creators or pain relievers, and what is meaning a gain creator or a pain reliever, if you have an extra competitive advantage next to the price, then you can uh, get a better uh, price or customers will be uh, willing to pay a higher price for your products uh, more than they want to pay to uh, the products of your uh, competitors. And that's a way of getting out of this inflation spiral. So that's the reason why we are talking about this uh, a value proposition. So in what way your company is able to make a uh, change in your uh, business model with a, a creating a gain creator or creating a pain reliever of a combination of those two. So the question is, what is my organization doing for my customers? And can I add some things to my products or to my services that give a gain creation or pain relief? Uh, like uh, branding, uh, uh, if you can add a brand on your product or your service uh, with a high value, then people are willing to pay higher prices for your products. If you can um, uh, cope with some problems your customers are dealing with, you can add a pain reliever to your product, then your organization is uh, less um, vulnerable for inflation. So that's the reason why I can advise you, if you want to change your business model uh, uh, to a, a higher level, if you want to uh, have less problems with inflation, try to be a pain reliever or a gain creator or a combination in your value creation, in your value proposition. Are there questions about it? Annette. How would you do that, uh, Henrik, uh, to um, create uh, a better value proposition? Because it's yeah. uh, one thing to say you have to do this, but how? Yes, uh, good question. Thank you. Um, that is um, uh, not an easy uh, uh, 
the answer is not easy. Um, you uh, must uh, think of your customers and in, in, in the way your customers are doing their business, doing their jobs. And then you must think of uh, advantages you can bring to this customer uh, in doing their business. Uh, for instance, in the, uh, uh, when you are a supplier of uh, uh, products for industry, uh, for maintenance, and, and you can uh, add things to those products that this maintenance in as a whole will be cheaper because of using your products, then the price competition is not the answer, is not uh, the, the main issue anymore because they are looking at the complete picture of the, 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 the company value. If you can uh, add uh, the way of uh, in your supply chain, uh, if you are packing the goods already in a way that customers can use it more easily than you did that before uh, so that they don't have extra distribution cost anymore. Then you add some uh, uh, value to your products uh, why, and, and that's uh, a way of getting higher prices for your products because of these value added activities. So those kind of, uh, those kind of things. Uh, uh, for the business school, the, this is what you are doing now is a way of uh, gain creation or maybe pain relief for the students so that you can inspire them, you can uh, give them advice, etc., uh, so that you add uh, value to, uh, to the school. Uh, those ways we can use normally to have a higher value proposition. Thank you, uh, Henrik. And um, indeed, these good morning um, BSN sessions are uh, hosted by the uh, Impact Center for Great Leadership at uh, BSN. Uh, we took this uh, initiative uh, earlier this year, and uh, it is actually the Hofstede group uh, who is uh, one of the founders, uh, together with the sponsorship uh, of uh, Chint Solar, a Chinese uh, new energy uh, company, um, and this is the reason why we can uh, offer these uh, brief sessions. And uh, the idea is to, to give everyone a few thinking points uh, for the day, uh, a few tools which they can uh, use immediately uh, after this, uh, this session. So thank you for your uh, contribution uh, that we need to uh, take into account that we can probably offset some risks of high inflation with uh, a better value proposition. Ademola, when you um, hear this, uh, you are working with uh, KPMG, uh, you are focusing on uh, finance uh, a lot. Um, what do you see uh, in, in your practices, uh, which relates to the story uh, Hinrich uh, was just telling us? Okay, good morning once again. Uh, thank you, Professor Hinrich, for the, the concise presentation. Very, very apt. And uh, I actually believe it's, uh, we don't have, at this time, we, we actually need things like this because of the situations globally that we are facing, uh, both from uh, the post COVID era and uh, also some other things happening in some other areas in the world. So for me, looking at um, inflation from a finance perspective, from what Prof has discussed, the first thing that jumps to me is cost. As, as an accountant, as a finance professional, uh, we notice, we have observed that cost in organizations, irrespective of the industry, uh, is rising. Uh, and then companies are finding it difficult to actually uh, push the same cost to the end user because the end, the end user now are well informed and uh, there is uh, access to uh, so many options. You have substitutes, you have um, uh, international market where you can uh, check prices. So the cost is actually hitting hard on most uh, organizations. And uh, so for me, what jumps out is cost. And what I've also uh, in practice, what I've, um, also try to do with some of the clients I've worked with uh, is 
when management, when they are looking at their monthly financial uh, performance. So instead of just looking at the, uh, the historical records, what has happened in the past, uh, try and also uh, look at the impact of inflation on some of the items on the P&L, like your revenue, your, your cost of sales, so that you can know the impact inflation is playing on those elements. So, and so management can also know All how. The world, yeah. and, so, and so management can know how to, to attend to such issues. So in practice, what that's what I've seen, and that's uh, what I've also presented to the management to know how to handle inflation. Because uh, for now, we don't we see inflation as uh, something that is going to be around for a while because of what is happening. So we just need to uh, be proactive and then know how to um, navigate uh, around it, and, and so that the company will not uh, will not go down. And do you have examples, uh, Adam Ola, of companies in Africa uh, who are uh, uh, successful in uh, making a, a better value proposition with, uh, with a higher uh, pain relief or, or gain creation for their customer? Uh, yes. Incidentally, the last company I worked with, uh, for confidential reasons, I can disclose their name. Uh, the it's actually a company in the FMCG uh, space, and uh, what what the company actually what they do is they regularly inter, um, have interactions with their customers. So they are, they are surveys. They know what they are trying to know what the customer is actually looking for. Apart from just getting the product uh, and getting satisfied, what else can the company do either in making uh, the, the payment platform easy, having different options of payment, uh, you know, uh, you're ordering from anywhere, getting delivery. So the company is looking at how to make uh, the customer satisfied. So some customers don't want to come to the store, the ones that are, want to stay at home, they still want to get the same product. So how do you, uh, how do you bridge that gap? So, so for, for, for the company I work with, yes, they interact with their customers and they also look out for solutions. Uh, to help uh, alleviate the pain of the customer instead of coming to the stores, they can sit anywhere, get the product, and also making payments uh, flexible, uh, you know, and uh, not you don't need to pay cash, you don't need to make transfers, you can come, uh, use some other means, and then you get the product. And, and that in that way, they uh, did not borrow, uh, they, they, they were not influenced by inflation that much anymore. Uh, yes, because if it's if 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 there's a form of digitization of the process, it reduces the costs so in the long run for the company. So the yeah. company also discovered that um, instead of having more of uh, manual interactions, yes. uh, you have digitizations of so many processes, which reduces uh, like what uh, Professor Henry discussed high um, uh, high remuneration. So that is taken care of once it's digitized, you know, you have a system that runs on its own and um, the customers are getting satisfaction. Also the company is um, adding value and the company also can invariably introduce some other form of services that will generate revenue. Uh, can you say that if you suffer from inflation, your value proposition is not good enough? Is that a, a correct statement? If you suffer inflation, value proposition is very relevant. Yeah. It's very relevant because you are looking at how you are adding value to your customer because you are, you are there to serve the customer. Without the customer, the company doesn't exist. So what is the customer looking out for and how can we uh, help the customer to achieve either the pain relief or creating more gains for the customer? So it's very relevant. Yes, I do agree. Yeah. If anyone uh, of you have a question for either Hendrik or uh, for Adamola, uh, please uh, raise uh, the hand or uh, you can also uh, put it uh, in the chat. I'm going to wait for a few seconds to see if I uh, receive a question, uh, yes or uh, yes or no. 
if not, I have a question for uh, uh, both of you. Um, if you look at um, Africa more, I think, than uh, in Europe, uh, you also have, in addition to high inflation, uh, currency uh, depreciation, devaluation of the currencies. To what extent does that aggravate uh, this issue? And uh, is it the same solution? Make sure your value proposition is um, uh, very durable. How do you look at that? Uh, George, what, what do you think? That's an interesting question. Uh, I actually, the devaluation of our local currency uh, is actually affecting uh, the cost of products. It's actually affecting cost of products. And um, in, the, in my last engagement, what I also uh, introduced was uh, just the same way we look at the impact of inflation on a month on month basis. Also, we look at the impact of the, the local currency devaluation. And then in, in looking at that, we know where to focus attention on and then uh, where the company was making importation uh, using foreign exchange and then exposing the company more. Uh, we looked at, okay, how can we uh, introduce uh, like uh, a backward integration? What can we do locally that we don't need to go outside uh, so that we can reduce our FX exposure? Uh, also, because we are thinking about the customers, we can't just go to the customers and say, okay, uh, the price of this product is uh, from, for instance, maybe from uh, uh, $1 to $3 because of inflation, because of devaluation. We can't go to the customer like that because you're going to lose a lot. So we try to manage what we have so that even if we want to present any uh, price increase, it will be minimal and the customer will be willing to pay. Yeah. Uh, economically, devaluation and inflation are combined situations. They are uh, uh, strengthening each other. So, but the, the way a country must deal with it is um, if you want to have a stronger value proposition as a country, you must invest in education, in development of your country. But for a company itself, the same thing is happening. If you have only a product that is not having any value proposition extra to the normal product, then uh, you're very vulnerable. And you see in a lot of countries and a lot of companies that they are not investing enough in this value proposition that they have only a, a weak position in uh, the, the competition uh, worldwide. And, and you have to work on that. Uh, with development of your product, with development of your people, education, uh, getting uh, more added value on your services and products. Uh, if not, then it's not possible to, uh, to come in a stronger position. I'm um, wondering, uh, Evert, uh, in where you are sitting, um, how does your organization deal with uh, inflation? Um, well, I work for Funda and uh, we are a real estate platform in the Netherlands. And we increased the prices in the beginning of this year with, uh, on average, about 11%. And although I thought after 10 years of Funda and knowing a bit uh, about the mechanics, with the uh, real estate brokers, who are a very conservative group of uh, business people, I thought this will give a lot of room. But to my surprise, uh, when I talked to sales, uh, they said, well, some of them were, were a bit grumpy and grumbling, but uh, after a week, uh, they, uh, they got used to it. And probably because the idea of, uh, of uh, a high inflation like last year, which is, of course, outrageous um, people are so uh, uh, informed by by media uh, papers uh, news uh, on television 
uh, over the last year that they sort of have it in their, I would say in their DNA, oh yeah, price increases will come. Um, and so this is the first time that we, that we did it on, on, I would say, general basis based on inflation. That was the story, the short version. And they accepted it. And that's also something that we are uh, intend to do for the coming years too. So we had hardly any uh, any problems in the market. No. But what is the what is the alternative for the brokers um, if uh, Funda is not giving those services you are doing? Uh, we are the value proposition for the broker. So there's hardly a number two in this market, at least in the Netherlands and other countries like England and uh, uh, I know I believe Switzerland and Germany. You have two or three competitors who are close to each other. In Holland, you have Funda, and there's a huge gap. And then there are the numbers two to 15 who hardly have any impact in the market. That's something that I worked for uh, since 2001 when we were founded. And we are founded by the uh, largest brokers association in the, in, the, in the Netherlands. So that gives you a, a big advantage. And it's very hard for others to compete or to enter our market. So that, that, that's the good news. I think, yeah, it sounds arrogant uh, and I don't mention to be like that, but we are the value proposition for real estate brokers. And we need continuously to, to improve what we do, how we do it. Uh, we, we also try to be uh, uh, in our way, I would say lean because we do not want to, uh, we earn a lot of money, but we don't want to spend it. It's for, a, you work for the shareholders uh, and not for yourself. So uh, all, all our stakeholders are happy with what we do, including our staff. Um, so we were also uh, able to increase the salaries of all staff with uh, a firm percentage. But that's what you read in, uh, in all papers. Everybody is now uh, asking for uh, an increase of salary. Um, but it, on, on the other end, it, it frightens a bit. If we keep on doing this uh, for a number of years, then yeah, the question is, where does it end? So you're the proof of a strong value proposition and you will not uh, suffering inflation? Uh, no, no, no. No, but on, on, on the other end, it, it, well, you see the, the, I would say the, well, the problem or, or the possible problem could be that you are being uh, perceived as very arrogant that you can do what you want. And it's something that we have never done. So we made a clear uh, statement uh, regarding this uh, in price increase and explained why we had to do it. And, and then people are willing to accept it, uh, also the brokers. And um, don't forget that they are a very tough group of, uh, of customers. They not from the association, they are our uh, biggest uh, shareholder, but on an individual basis, they are really tough to negotiate uh, with because they're all, and most of them are very small companies with one or two, one or two staff uh, employed. Uh, and it, it's tough to, to negotiate with them, stubborn. Uh, they have their own business. Uh, compared to a bigger uh, company, you also have real estate companies in Holland, uh, that have 100 to 120 people employed. They are, to my opinion, more businessmen, business, uh, uh, yeah, uh, driven, and they look at it from a, a completely different way. Can I ask you, uh, Frodo, um, you are advising uh, companies and you often um, help them uh, with higher growth. Um, which obviously is a different proposition uh, than a better uh, value proposition. Um, what is your take away uh, in terms of inflation? Is high growth also a good solution? Well, it's, it's first of all, it's a difficult uh, issue that is uh, quite new for lots of businesses uh, to deal with. Businesses that I work for were used to deal with complex complexity and competition. And now there's a new variable and it's called inflation. 
And for example, I work for a real estate uh, development and building company. And they were really hit by inflation uh, due to problems in the value chain or in the, I'm sorry, in the supply chain last years, uh, which is a by effect of uh, the Corona uh, crisis and is also a by effect of the, of the war in Ukraine. So we are not necessarily adjusting our business model and the, and the, and the value proposition, but we focus on the management of the cash flow. For example, when uh, a, a huge project uh, needs to be funded, uh, we have to deal with a higher interest rates. And when the project is funded, uh, you have to start building. And there you are, you found yourself in the complexity of supply chain issues. And when you're building the project not fast enough, then problems occur with the funding part of the project. So it's a sort of running behind your own tail and, tail, uh, and the tails of other stakeholders involved. So for, for in this case, for example, it's, there's no adjustment of, uh, of value proposition, but it's more focusing on uh, the finance uh, matters of the case. And um, Henrik, um, what do you think of this approach? Would it work as well as uh, focusing on the value proposition? Now, the problem with uh, uh, the Frodo is uh, coping with this, depending on uh, you um, have already set the prices of your, uh, your projects uh, and those prices are fixed. So you, you cannot change that anymore if you don't have negotiated that beforehand. Um, and then uh, you are starting to build and uh, the, 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 the sources you are using uh, are having getting uh, higher prices. Uh, your margins are squeezed, but also the availability of a lot of uh, uh, materials uh, can be a problem. So then uh, you're squeezed by uh, the the timeline of your project. Um, uh, the only thing you can do with the knowledge of now is with new product projects, uh, uh, build in uh, the possibility of inflation, uh, build in uh, the possibility of supply chain uh, problems like we are coping nowadays. So new projects you can change, but the old projects, yeah, I think, uh, uh, that will be a losing game or the game is yes. not as profitable as you thought it was when you start uh, to when you you did your sign on it is that correct frodo uh to a certain extent uh, we were awake so we negotiated <laughs> in the contracts uh, with our suppliers uh that create a space uh to buy time or to raise uh, prices. Uh, one of the main issues is uh, still the supply chain issues or the lack of labor, for example, causing that the supply of raw materials you, you need in construction work, yeah. that you have to wait longer. And that's, uh, so we're, in other words, we're part of an ecosystem. Yes. Thanks. So I can, yeah. So I can completely see your point of view of uh, changing or improving your business model and, and your value proposition. But we're embedded in the ecosystem, uh, and now that's one of my questions: how to influence uh, an ecosystem which is completely uh, founded or built for years, for decades on. Uh, competition and win-lose instead of win-win. Yeah. So it, it takes a different mindset for all partners and stakeholders in uh, development of projects and uh, building the projects, for example, 
uh, the people that needs that need houses. Yes, to... so it must be a more sustainable solution. Uh, uh, we we need a new business model based on sustainable. Uh, so also customers, government, but also big companies must uh, make contracts more sustainable by uh, building those e e ecosystems in. Yes. I'm going to stop this conversation because uh, it is a little bit uh, away from the topic and uh, Ruwimbo uh, Doka has uh, raised uh, the hand. Uh, go ahead, uh, Ruwimbo. Thank you. Um, just, I know we're running out of time. Uh, maybe we can just slip over it, think about it. The case of Zimbabwe, um, I'm with um, an insurance broker, but on the pension side, every macro environment, uh, environmental issue is going the other way. The exchange rate, inflation, the list is endless. Um, even if you have the business model, the value proposition, we seemingly are running out of options and choices on a solution to create value for both the business and the customers. Maybe a that's, quick that's just from uh, Henrik about- uh, Mineva. Mineva is, um, it used to be Aeon International, but Aeon went out of Zimbabwe because of some legislation issue. So it's now called Mineva, but it still uh, is an exclusive office of Aeon International. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Rimbo. Uh, very quickly, uh, Henrik, in 30 uh, seconds. No, in 30, this is also a problem of long contracts. A pension is also a very, very long contract. And if the value of your assets by inflation is going down, then the value of your pensions is going down. So that's a very big problem. And I cannot answer, uh, not solve that in 30 seconds, <laughs> I'm afraid. But um, uh, maybe we can think of uh, new uh, ways of thinking about pensions and the real value of it. But I think I, I need more time for that. Sorry for that, Remimbo. Maybe later on uh, by email. Yes, thank you very much. Thanks for your question and thank for your active participation today. That was really great to see so many different uh, examples. Next week, we talk about mindfulness and uh, reflection. And for now, I wish you a good day. And